Oh, what a cute, adorable bunny. Finally, Subaruka let his stress out. Let everything out. So what's up guys, Fox in here. SAO Lizization. Wait, hold up a minute, it's been a while. ReZero Season 2, aka ReZero Episode 33. Back by popular demand for today. So go ahead and rem smash that like. If this does get 6,000 likes plus, I will be back reviewing this weekly. I'll give you more insider info on this a little bit later. Hashtag no sponsor, so let's dive into ReZero. In the previous episode, after getting locked up for three days, he had that wonderful moment with Oto. Now this episode, Ram helping out too. She claims she's ordered by Roswell. So it was interesting to see Subaru continue to do what he was doing. I somewhat expected him to reset, you know, losing three days of time. Very precious days, by the way. Time to get more juicy info from the clown mummy. This may be due to Subaru's stubborn character, but it almost seems obvious to grab one of these people he's surrounded by or comes across with vast knowledge and then just ask them for information. I mean, recently, the major example was a chance to ask anything to the Witch of Greed. You may recall me mentioning something similar during my Shield Hero reviews. By the way, for the no makeup gesture, interesting to see the blood completely removed for the anime. I was wondering why. I mean, Razor clearly has no problem with showing more than blood. Anyway, getting to the hot topic, Betty, is she part of the witch cult? At least for this point, I do like Subaru not holding back any punches. Betty does have a death note and all. So I'm really curious from you, what do you think the deal is with Betty? Especially recently with her concerns of Mr. Green dying, leaving her behind as she put it. If I recall, the anime also cut out Beetlejuice being mentioned as a spirit himself too. One of the details I did love about this was Subaru looking awfully in pain as he tried to pin the blonde lowly as an enemy. Could you blame the guy? I really did start to see some connection being formed between the two. In season 2, they finally revealed Betty to be some type of spirit, and so far they've been heavily hinting at Subaru having some strong connection to spirits in general. That reveal of Betty only helping Subaru due to what was in that black witch book really would stab a hole through anyone's heart. I thought we had a thing going, Betty. I would have placed you right next to Petra on the love circle. So getting into it, the gospel reveal. Is Betty not doing any witch activities or recruitment on her off time? No, don't worry about it. You could trust her. This coming from a not so trustful face. Complete with the eye closed. If this doesn't scream out questionable info, I don't know what does. For the Mr. Green heavily suggested that his text was capable of the same. It was mixed in with that verbal diarrhea he was mouthing off. Thankfully, Roswell did address this too. So there's two complete versions and defective ones, which is likely what the witch archbishops got. It almost feels obvious, but Subaru doesn't ask further. Come on, dude, grasp for that information. Although to be fair to Subaru, likely some thoughts from him as to why he didn't ask got cut out for the anime. Alright, so moving forward, Roswell said you gotta ask the question or I am that person. So Roswell has a safe word for Betty, I see. Sounds like either one, that person may be whoever has the second book. Or likely other possible option is connected to whomever her contract is linked to. Time to activate the blonde lolly and get all that juicy info. Hey Subaru, just get her to be a full-time bodyguard again. Then for the Subaru enemy question, I mean this is a total fair assumption at this point. I do recall the enemy cutting out further suspicions towards him, even from Amelia based on the ongoing events. Not to mention all of the things he's been doing behind her back. Alright, so road trip time, the dragon plus the bros together. Except I spoke too soon. Both of these account for one single man total. Oh, the burn. Honestly, Ram, you're not doing yourselves too many favors being the replacement of Ram. So slight detail being brought up here, Hoshin. This was the legendary dude part of Anastasia's backstory, which the anime cut out. Funny hearing about it now of all places. Which by the way, I have been considering doing some videos covering the world building details the anime acts down. Post below if you want to see that. For Ram here, I did notice her holding something the last time around. I was thinking, is it a folded fan? But no, it looks more like a wand. I'm going to assume it's something to improve her wind magic, or heavily reduce her mana consumption. Then, for Garfield being super pissed off at Roswell. Supposedly he doesn't care about the spot, Ram, or anyone else. It really feels like this guy's voicing out Subaru's concerns. Although, is he wrong? The clown actually admitted to Ram only being a pawn of his, something he would easily discard. Surely it wouldn't be a shock if he sees Subaru and Emilia in a similar fashion. Alright, so getting into it, Oto Pro for the win. How much has this guy saved Subaru's ass already? I did get the slight fuse with the townsfolk pitching in to help Subaru's escape. Subaru, you really need all the help you can get. And I was just waiting for it. I was wondering when would Garfield's giant pussy form come out? You're totally done, Subaru. You versus a roided out tiger? Just reset now before you become Subaru Stinks. But come on, first the adorable Petra and now Otto? You can't hesitate now. Otto's not gonna be crawling away from that one. Dip yourself in some mayo and then jump inside of the tiger's mouth. 
Speaking of which, where was Rama? There is no way Mr. Stripes got past her with her surviving. And goddamn, even the dragon too? You already have some dragons making me tear up from the last SEO episode. But oh no, it looks like Subaru got saved. Blue teleportation. Not sure whether to call that a blessing. I'm vaguely recalling now some teleportation being added to the light novel. Really just to speed up some events from the web novel story, which were cut down. I'm not sure whether this blue gem was it, but it feels like it. It seems more or less Subaru has grown more accustomed to dying in ReZero Season 2. Subaru really needs a quick and lethal but painless way of dying instantly. Just get whatever the witch guys had to make them go boom. If anyone's around you, it's not your problem. I do like the slight moment here of Subaru, it almost feels like he's about to break down, but it recalls all the people dying recently as burning motivation. Keep on going, dude. I was just wondering, did Subaru get into another trial mid-fight? Better hope your autosave doesn't kick in. From the far shot, I like how you can see the barrier kicking in from the Lost Woods. Anyway, getting to the cute, adorable bunny. Oh, let's just ignore it has a horn like the beast dogs or the white whale. It actually reminded me of the Konosuba bunnies that have a drill horn on them. But holy ramen, this is that type of bunny. My god, this death was extremely horrifying. I could feel it on my skin crawling. At first, it seemed like a cute, awful way to die. But could this have been the worst Subaru death yet? Dying via the Piranha Demon Bunnies. I mean, to think about it, you don't instantly die, instead getting chunk by chunk by chunk. The only other super horrifying times would be the ice death, but at that point you would be so cold you wouldn't even feel pain. Another one would be Elsa, that was bad, slicing you up, which was actually worse than the web novel. There, you had her cutting Subaru's eyes and limbs further. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, death by the horribly cute wabbits. Oh dude, you can't let that go, Subaru needs some sweet revenge. I want to see him pimped out with his white fluffy coat by the end of season 2. Fortunately, if I could even say that, Subaru did not get a new save spot. It looks like the gods at play want him to continue helping out Emilia. Really dude, how much longer will it be until Subaru gets another round of PTSD? Potato Subaru when? Looks like your greedy witch booty call is calling you again. Did Subaru just achieve permission for the second trial? At this rate, watch him finish all the trials before Emilia even wakes up. Oh, Amelia, you thought you failed? No, no, you did so well. So well, in fact, you completed all three trials. Ha 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 ha. No, no, that's my normal laugh. Right here. And oh my god, I just love how shocked Echidma was at Subaru. Oh, he's too close. I am loving Subaru defying every last assumption she had of him. Overall, it's been so much fun to see how much of a clueless stick Subaru has been to Echidma. Ironically, but justifiably due to his own prejudice of her being a witch. Sound familiar, Subaru? Yet so far, she's been completely helpful, if not more than that. As for Subaru putting two and two together, Echidna surely knows more than she's leading on, especially about outside events, despite her claiming to be ignorant. That foreshadowing though, you're gonna cry over my fallen body someday. Hey Subaru, are you about to add another lovely lady to your party? Gotta collect them all. So getting into one of the biggest moments this episode, Return by Death. Echidna officially being the first person he's been able to tell, but why? So it looks like some juicy answers are about to come for this powerful Isekai ability. Oh, whoops, did I mean Isekai curse? The weird part of here is that she claims she's been watching him for the longest time. What a devoted stalker. In reality, Akina is just like you and me, a hardcore fan of the Razor story. So how chilling was this Razor episode? It's been a while, so what's been the worst and best moment for Subaru in Season 2? Really, the death here should be one of the top three, no problem. And so far, I've really been in this Razor binge the past two weeks. It really is great to get this back in my veins. Anyway, getting into my thoughts about the Razor Season 2 stuff, I haven't been able to comment about. So far, I think one of the most bone-chilling scenes this season has been Petra. You had the adorable Petra coming in as a maid, really just building her up slowly, leading to that one dreadful scene. That really affected me deeply. And shame for me, I knew she was gonna die, but I should have seen that coming a mile away. Another side to her is the Petra route. How do you feel about this? The anime definitely hasn't been shy about her crushing on Subaru, which was even more amplified in the light novel. Petra hinting at even possible marriage thoughts for Subaru. It looks like this is one Isekai trope that ReZero is not avoiding. I also need to touch on the Subaru backstory. I'm really curious to see what your thoughts on this was. Honestly, I always thought this backstory felt a little weird. And I should mention it does make sense. You had depression from Subaru really failing to live up to this father figure. The weird part here was the father and mother not doing anything about it, as far as we could tell. For all of this stuff, you're always trying to relate it back to yourself. Which had me thinking, what would my parents do? Oh, you're not going to school. You're sad? You better get your little ass to school and be sat over there. 
Uh, something around those lines would happen. It makes it that much stranger that this was Japan, by the way. And perhaps it's just me, I need a rewatch. I really did want this whole episode to impact me that much. That said, to be fair, I do think the anime did a lot better job than the light novel. But Reezer Season 2 overall has been kicking major ass. For the whole episode, perhaps the most impactful thing was the mother's goodbye. In Japanese, you did have the Itakimasu Iterashai combo. Pretty much Subaru lying that he'll be back. But in reality, that's likely never going to be possible now. As for some of the characters in Season 2, you had Frederica and her lying beast mode. I'm really liking her. And no, it's not because you saw her only fans preview. She actually reminded me of that blonde chick from Akame Ga Kill. Hopefully we get to see more of her. I mean, her and Petra are basically the Rem replacement. Then you have the new witch, Echidna. I definitely need to see more of her. I've been freaking loving every one of her interactions. Which, by the way, she did recently voice Quinella, which is so perfect. Then you have Garfield, the total a-hole. Although this guy was ruder in the web novel. Almost his Bakugo-like temper. At first, I couldn't pin it down, but it turns out this is actually Bakugo's voice actor. Go figure. Anyway, don't forget to smash that like. If this does pass 6,000 by next week, I will highly consider going out of my way to do these weekly. So some quick insider information about what's been going on. Originally, I did talk about wanting to do ReZero videos weekly. And you know how that turned out. I was also supposed to be doing SAO videos weekly outside of the reviews. This may give you an idea of my busy schedule plus how far behind I've gotten. Fun fact. Despite me living in Japan, unfortunately anime comes out here at midnight or later, which means ironically covering the anime episodes is much more difficult while in Japan. I do wake up at like 2, 3 a.m. for SAO, but that's special, and honestly that leaves me destroyed afterwards. So if this does pass 6,000 likes and gets enough attention, I'll try to wake up early, not 4 a.m. early, but likely 6 or 7, just to get a quick review out. And I do use quick loosely. These videos still take hours to put together. By and say that doesn't happen, show too much blood, you know, free zero, or some sexy time that the anime episode may have had. Another potential risk for your anime video getting flagged for adult content. Being a YouTuber is so much fun. Fun fact, my Rem wakes up video got flagged for being too adult somehow. I don't even know. Which really just boils down to any one of these anime review videos really being strictly for you, so please enjoy them. Hopefully I do see you next week, and if I don't, either way I do have reserve videos coming till the end of this season 2 chunk. But anyway, bonus question for hardcore fans. Are you enjoying reserve season 1 or season 2 more, and why? Super curious. Do check out my Ram Wexo video that's too adult somehow. Subscribe for more reserve SAO and anime videos, and I'll see you guys later.